All right, let's get the the resilience video. Well, uh, man, I tell you, my feet, these rocks have been through these tennis shoes. But uh, anyway, let's. Uh, I just wanted to continue. I wanted to get the resilience video before I have to turn around because I am. That's the worst part of the day when you got to turn around and hike back. <laughs> man, <coughs> you can tell I'm getting a little tired. It's always nice to have a loop, you know. When you got a loop, it's all new all the way around. So let's get back on the. I'll just put it on the prairie. Look at that. I'll just keep it out here. You know, this is where we're heading. So what do I? What do I mean by resilience? And uh, you know, what have I done over the years? And what am I continuing to do? And what can you do? And um, you know, it's uh, it's just mainly. I mean, it's it's a real simple. You just kind of look around your life. Look around your house, look around your things, <clears throat> and uh, and figure out everything that you need to upgrade, okay? So let's just go through a few examples. Now, I talked about years ago, we got uh, some precious metals, okay? And, uh, you you know, you can still get them, but they're getting very rare. Um, so that was one thing, you know, financial resilience. And, uh, but I uh, didn't want to talk about that. It was mainly, let's just... Uh, bring it all the way up to uh, 2017 okay and here's an example so so we arrived uh, during the hurricane actually just before the hurricane here in Florida and uh, you know I, I remember man that was rough I had all the boxes on the floor and, you know I had to get them all up because I thought for sure my house was going to flood because we were in a, a low point in the community and uh, by the time the hurricane got there I was so tired I slept right <laughs> I slept right through it. I woke up the next day and it was over. It was like, holy moly, missed the whole hurricane. You know, I would have been up all night watching it out the windows, you know, because we don't have shutters. Um, and we didn't put up plywood because we, well, we didn't have time. We'd only been there a week. And uh, and that's, you know, um, so we, I got started on, you know, that's my, my fortress. You know, the, I can't afford the two properties. I don't have a, a bug out property, although I do want to get one someday you know, someplace, uh, mainly for just having a garden, but I'd also put, you know, some sort of structure on it where we could temporarily live if we had to, you know, if my, my neighborhood got set on fire or something, you know. Uh, but, um, so I, you know, my, so I had just had to go around and fortify the house. And uh, so we, we put a new roof on. I, now that took, took hard work. You, you really, really got to look around for the right contractor to, uh, to do your roof uh, we got lucky uh, you know the community recommends them and uh, but you know they, they came out and a good contractor he'll he'll talk to you quite a bit you know he's not going to hide anything from you and he's telling you what what he's doing and why he's doing it and lets you ask questions like I I knew you know I, I used to have a, a one of those um, fans up in the up in the ceiling and uh, he said no 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 you just want the ridge vents and he says we're going to extend those ridge vents out quite a bit and he says, I'm going to cut in a ridge vent on the side over here to give you even more uh, ventilation uh, in that attic. He says, that'll that'll keep things from, from getting too carried away. And he says, we're going to wind mitigate it. And then you're all right. So enough on the roof. You know, the next thing, next big thing was we knew we had to paint the house. It hadn't been painted in, you know, I don't know, 15 years or so. Uh, if at all, I don't know. And uh, so the guy, we, we found a guy and he was awesome i mean absolutely awesome he came out and he described the paint that he was going to use and he went down you know below he had to move all that rock away from the foundation and so he went down below the rock to to paint paint it and uh he of course he had to power wash it before he could paint it and so but i mean i tell you what that was worth every penny that guy worked his buns off and it was some hot days too some of these guys here in florida you know they got to make a living and so they they can't just enjoy the good weather like i am right now Sometimes they got to work in bad weather, you know, so I kind of felt, but you know, I'm, I always make sure that I give them, you know, whatever, you know, whatever they hadn't brought with them, you know, pop or water, and you should too, I mean, these people work hard. Um, so, you know, that was the next thing, and now you're, you're looking around, and I knew that the, uh, the master bath vanity uh, needed to come out, because, well, if it turned out the wood was damaged, and I think they're might have been a little bit of black mold down in there and uh you know a stupid homeowner i went out and i, me I measured it real well and i found a vanity that i really really liked that had the 
you know, like I, I always want a vanity. It's got plenty of drawers. It's got the little pull-out thing on the on the top uh, for your toothbrushes and stuff, you know. And uh, and it was man, I tell you what, I I couldn't. Get, I got the other one out myself because I'm doing as much of the work as I can, but I couldn't get get the new one in, and uh, I had to hire a guy, and uh, he got it in there. But then it turns out the plumbing, the plumbing was weird, and it had to come up through the wall. So man, that plumber was there for. I'd say five, six hours. Man, that was a that was a hefty bill for just getting the faucet in. So I kind of screwed up there. You know, it's you do the best you can, and you know sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Um, you know, like I was wrong about that property in Tennessee, right about the precious metals. There you go. So uh, you know, the next thing I'm looking around, looking around, and I'd already replaced the vanity in the guest bath. I did that before we we uh, moved in. I, well, I moved in. I was down here working while my wife was up selling the house in Michigan. Uh, that's another story in and of itself. And um, so, uh, so yeah, you got two brand new vanities. Uh, next thing was the toilets. I took those toilets out. There was the old, you know, the old, old toilets where you feel like you're sitting on the floor and, you know, I'm not trying to gross you out or anything, but I mean, I, I wanted the elongated seat. Uh, and then I, you know, then I had to put a bidet on on both of them and you know we ran the plumbing you know out to the toilet so that i got hot water uh and i'll tell you what having a bidet if you could so you can just buy it it's attached to the back of the toilet you know you're not you don't have to buy a special bidet but i did have room for a bidet in fact the, the plumber said i can put you in a real bidet and uh, i kind of regret not doing it but uh that's all right I, it does make that bathroom look a lot more roomy and and then, you know, the next homeowner might not even want it, so you can just take it off of the toilet. And uh, so that, you know, and then, then, you know, we wanted to get, uh, well, we thought we'd have guests. Uh, <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> I don't have many friends in the world. You, you can say, well, I can understand that, Kirk. But uh, so, you know, we put in a real nice guest room, and thank God we did. You know, my wife, uh, she's, she's mad at me right now because, uh, you know, I'm still a conservative, and she's liberal, so she's... Uh, so I'm using the guest bedroom for now. I mean, I ho hopefully I get back in there. Now she is getting surgery on Friday, so that's that was important to have two separate beds and then really nice. I make sure you get good furniture. And then she went out and outfitted the furniture. And I think she did real well. It's it looks really really floridic, and uh, then it gave her and her sister something to do. They they looked around everywhere. So now you you got that, and then uh, of course um, you know I kept my. Uh, my lazy boys uh, from Michigan and you know that that went into the Florida room and that's been a, a real pleasure you know made sure we had a TV in there I uh, I got I had a TV in the in the uh, dining room and then of course I put one in the master bedroom I didn't put it in the guest bedroom and then of course one in my office now you say that's a lot of TVs Kurt but I tell you what it's nice to have that TV on when you're sitting there cooking in the kitchen and you can just there's a there's a gap right up right behind there and I can sit there and watch the Florida room TV or if I just want the other TV on I can leave that one in and my wife puts it on for the die you know I'm just so I'm just kind of pecking around pecking around you know let's see what else do you want to do you know so then uh, when the virus came you know I knew I had to get up to Virginia to help my mother and uh, you know so well I forgot to tell you so I back then you know I was living the dream when we first got here we joined the, uh, the you know because golf you know I, I I was a big golfer when I was younger, um, not so much when I got older because it's expensive. I was up in Michigan for sure. So we went ahead and bought the golf membership, and I was playing, you know, three times a week, sometimes four times a week. Um, but you, you know what? It didn't seem much of a good thing. It's just I got sick of it, you know. But I, you know, and I even I think I bought a membership in 2018 also. So that was two years of golf before I just decided, you know, I, I want to do other things. I want to come out here and do some hiking, you know, whatever else there is. But all during that time when I was playing golf, I was working on the house. You know, the driveway had uh, drainage problems. Uh, there was a big tunnel underneath it. I had to dig that all out, move all that rock, you know, and that was a big project with sawhorses. It took me months because I was playing so much golf, you know, I'd work, I'd work on it every day I wasn't playing. And, uh, and of course, at that time, I, you know, you're living the dream, right? I wanted to learn how to play pickleball. That was fun. Uh, you got the tennis courts. Uh, you know, you're saying, well, Kirk, that sounds like a rough life. You know, uh, you know, I, it's, uh, you try to stay busy. You got to keep, you know, my doctor says, because I'm a cancer survivor, I have to exercise an hour every day. 
you know, when I'm, when I'm going hiking, I try to do more than an hour. But when I'm doing other things, you know, I can only play about an hour pickleball and then I'm done for the day, you know. So, uh, all right, so we're continuing looking around the house. I, so that was getting into the journey up to Virginia. So I hadn't been camping in years. Uh, and so all that camping equipment was sitting in my, my garage. And uh, I said, well, I got to find all my old uh, backpacking clothes because I was planning on doing some backpacking. Got to re, re, redo the tents, you know, seam seal them, treat the fabric, uh, get them out, make sure everything's still working okay. Uh, it took me months of uh, preparation and my wife's like, you're buying all this camping equipment. And cause I couldn't, you know, some of the stuff had just like the, my boots, for example, I got the boots out and they weren't even, I don't think they were in the garage. And, and literally I put them on my feet and they felt, they just fell apart. The sole just, it, it, it had melted. It just, it just fell right off the boot for, for an, an, just one example. And uh, so now I'm buying seam sealer and, but you know, I think that was important because if we do have a financial catastrophe, I'm going to go out and do some camping. I want to stay the hell away from people and, you know, and enjoy life. And uh, can, I mean, can you imagine coming out here? I, now, I haven't found it. There's supposed to be a campground around here somewhere. Uh, I haven't. And, but it would be cool to backpack in here and spend a night. I mean, imagine just, just being out here somewhere. Um, and there's other places like this around around my area, and it's not a huge drive uh, to get in here. Um, so, uh, so that was really important to upgrade all of that uh, camping equipment. And, and in the event there's a hurricane or a power outage, or uh, you know a natural disaster of some sort, hell, hell, look at what Texas just went through. So I can break out all that camping gear with propane heaters and and uh, everything else. Uh, all my cold weather gear I kept. Um, so we. We would be pretty set in a situation like that. Plenty of food, that's another thing. You know, I'm always stocking up, making sure I got plenty of toilet paper, plenty of supplies, plenty of Clorox, plenty of hand sanitizer. So I was, you know, when the, when the virus hit, I was completely ready with all the supplies. And then, you know, I was working on getting up to Virginia uh, to camping along the way, because I didn't want to stay in a hotel room. Because back then we thought, you know, anybody that got it was going to die. <laughs> you know, was, they were all over the place on, on that stuff. And uh, so I upgraded the camping equipment. So then, you know, I looked around and, uh, well, when I, when I knew Biden was going to get into the presidency, what, you know, I'm thinking about, well, what are the Democrats going to do first thing? Well, he killed the Keystone Pipeline. He's, you know, a lot of the fracking is gone. Um, so I knew, I knew, well, we got inflation coming too. That's the financial catastrophe. That was the first video, uh, another video that I did. And uh, so uh, I wanted to make sure I had a, a vehicle. So I bought a motorcycle that gets 100 miles to the gallon. Uh, now, not everybody can ride a motorcycle. I understand that. But you can get those three wheelers and they're expensive. I mean, you know, so I can understand. Uh, and even even my motorcycle was expensive. And, you know, it, it, it is going to take some maintenance to keep it up. But you know, I got it brand new, Honda ADV 150. I highly recommend it. It really uh, gets up in boogies, and uh, you know, and it's fun because now I can come out here. If I was driving my car, I'm a long ways from home, okay? And uh, that would be, you know, in my car. This would have been a couple, three gallons of gas. And uh, if you, uh, when we hit five dollars a gallon, that's fifteen dollars right there just to come out here and go hiking. You know, my motorcycle at 100 miles to the gallon. I bet I wouldn't burn one gallon. It'd cost me maybe five dollars to get here. So you got these are things. These are things you got to be thinking about. You know, I've also got uh, kited in for because of my camping, right? I got my water filters. I got a, a big one that I can just dump a mud puddle into, and it'll filter for a lot of water. Uh, then I've got the pumping filters where you can go out backpacking, and I I could just go right down here on this river and just pump water right out of that river and drink it. Right now, boy, I tell you that would that'd be good too. <laughs> so you know, my, my water supply is taken care of the 50 gallon uh, barrel in the back uh you know now uh, this this year i mean it took me from october and i'm still working on it uh, and here we are uh, about midway through march uh but i put in a vegetable garden against the hoa rules screw them you know i want to grow some food i think you're going to want to grow food i think vegetables are going to be extremely expensive here very shortly uh, um so you know i'm I, it's not a huge garden but i I should get a pretty good yield out of it as long as I can keep the animals off of it. I mean, they're telling me that rabbits and, uh, uh, well, even birds or uh, uh, squirrels, you know, can get in there and steal, 
your cherry tomatoes and stuff like that. So I got to probably buy some more. I mean, so, you know, it's it's been a pretty, I wouldn't say expensive project. I mean, the dirt, dirt cost me $30. A lot of backbreaking work to get that rock out. Um, so, uh, you know, so that was another thing that I thought about. Then I, then I said, well, wait a minute. That hot water heater's 20 years old. Of course, my liberal wife is, is still bitching at me about getting the hot water heater because the old one was still working. But I took a video, maybe I'll get it up someday, because I gotta cut it up. I filmed them guys the whole time they were there. It took them four hours. There was so much sediment in the bottom of that thing, they couldn't they couldn't get the water out of the hot water heater. And uh, uh, I, I knew it was gonna be bad because the, the valve, I couldn't turn the valve to, because you gotta drain a hot water heater about every six months uh, to get the uh, sediment out. And uh, that one had never been drained because there's no way you could open the valve to drain it. So I knew that thing was going to be bad, and so now I'm, uh, I'm resilient, right? Now I got a new hot water heater, and then I looked around. You know, I've been looking at my computer equipment, and it's getting dated. Uh, you know, my laptop's about four or five years old. Uh, the uh, my computers, I, I built them back in 2000. Now they're not still great computers. I mean, I, I spent the money back then and put them together, and but you know the technology has improved. And would would I love to uh, upgrade them or build a new computer? Sure. I would love it. Wow, hey, check the bird out. There he is. I wonder if that's probably a hawk. And here goes, hey, here goes another boat. That's the third one I've seen. That's amazing that that river's deep enough that they can just come down that channel. Boy, I bet that's a beautiful, beautiful boat ride. Holy moly. Now, one of them was a pontoon boat. He had his whole family on there. I thought that was cool. Imagine, I don't know, I wonder where they're putting in at. There's probably a must be someplace way up here on the river that they're putting in. Um, oh, back back to the resilience. Sorry, get off on a tangent. See a bird, see a boat, and just go. And uh, so the what's oh so I looked around at the computer equipment and the power. I mean, it was kind of like sometimes, uh, you know, it's like God reaching down and tapping you on the head and saying, "Hey, you know, maybe you should take care of this." So I had these uh, had an old smart UPS, probably about 15 years old. Because you can just replace the batteries in those, and that was my plan. So I kept it when I bought another UPS, uh, you know, and I thought, well, I'll just put... So I call up APC, and they're like, well, that one, smart UPS, is 15 years old. And, uh, you know, you're, I said it was beeping at me. He says, well, that usually means that it's, the battery's going bad. And I said, well, you know, that would be a way to upgrade my computer room before the financial crisis hits. I'll put a new APC in. And, uh, and, and also as a way to downgrade. I'm, gonna, I'm getting rid of both those, the UPSs that are in there, which, because that's a whole shelf. That's a whole shelf. I mean, that's a big box that I had in my, my small little office, and now I can get rid of that. It's going to give me a lot more room, and the new UPS will last about, uh, I want to say, five to ten hours longer, which is incredible, because the UPS that I got now only lasts uh, maybe an hour, hour two, you know, maybe two hours, you know, when, so when the power went out, a few times I'm in there watching TV and my wife, how can you have TV? You know, as long as you, you still got internet, right? So how can you have TV when all the power's out you're around the house? And I'm watching it off of the UPS, you know? Uh, man, I tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around. I'd love, well, let's get over this hill up here. And I got maybe one more video for the, the, the hiking video. That was a different video. So, uh, so, I mean, look at all those things that I've done. Uh, and rock, you know, I've, I've gone underneath the rock, the uh, one of the, the sprinklers. I replaced all the sprinklers around the house because you got to sometimes in Florida, it gets dry for quite some time. So you got to water that grass. Otherwise, it's going to all die. And uh, the whole sprinkler system was just shot. In fact, uh, the, the buckets, you know, the outside of the sprinklers come out of the wall and there's buckets down in the ground where the wiring is. And when I went out there, one, I couldn't find them. I'm like, they got to be right here. You know, and I dug down into the rock, and there the, there it was, underneath the rock. They just buried it underneath the rock, and of course now it's completely full of dirt. And you got to be real careful because there's wiring down in there. So I had to sit out there with spiders crawling on me and bugs and crap, you know, because it was hot. And uh, get all that uh, sandy soil out of out of the box, and then, and then I had to figure out, you know, where the problem was. Um, Luckily, I didn't have to hire somebody, but there, there were sections of those sprinklers. Those sprinklers were busted in three, three of the main lines, you know, and that cost money. Every time I bought somebody in, it was $70, $100. Um, but, uh, you know, there you go. And maybe I'm going to have to do it again. Maybe I nick those lines in the back putting that garden in. 
Um, you know, I could do a lot of the work I can do. And that was another thing is the learning curve on all this stuff. You know, I had to learn how to, to, to work on sprinklers. You can't afford to pay somebody to do all that work all the time. Not the amount of work that I had. Uh, so that was another thing that I did. Uh, took, a, took a tree out that was uh, a maintenance nightmare. It was leaning over top of the house with the roots growing in. That was a, a four month long project of me out there with a hatchet whacking on it. 600 pound stump to come out of the ground, you know, moving rock. So <clears throat> all I'm saying, okay, for resilience is, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're way, way late to the battle right now. But, uh, you know, you still got time before the dollar devalues so much that you can't buy anything. Uh, not much time. So now it would be a real good time to dip into that savings. It didn't earn you anything. You're not getting any interest. I've let all my CDs mature. Uh, I got a couple more, but uh, you know, I'm still waiting on those. As soon as they mature, I'm, I'm spending the money, man. I don't keep it in the bank. I don't trust them. And uh, if you got a safety deposit box, you don't want that either. You know, I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to have uh, the, the wherewithal to protect it at your house. Because uh, none of that stuff is gonna be safe here very shortly. Um, so, you know, that's a, so I'm just trying to give you what you can do now by looking back on everything that I did in the past. And maybe you got some ideas from me on everything I've done over the years. And that doesn't even cover, I bet that doesn't cover a fraction. So you can see whenever I'm not golfing, which I'm not hardly anymore, um, you know, and the only reason I'm out here hiking is because I got to get exercise. You know, it's got to have a balance to life. I can't work on that garden every dog on day can kill my health you know i got to get out here and do get some exercise plus it's a this is a, this is also mental relief you know um so you know i work on myself mentally spiritually uh you know the house my fortress of solitude um you know it's uh you know, all the way around all the way around you know stocking up making sure i just you know like today uh, let's, let's get another example. Okay, so I go to Publix. Publix, they always have something at the front door that's two for one, and it's always a good deal. And that's kind of how they get people into the uh, into the store. Okay, I had to go anyway. I always recycle everything. I recycle my styrofoam and plastic bags, and, and they take those. So I figured I made a little special trip to go there. And uh, so you know, I just go in. And what did I pick up today? Two cans of soup. So what? You know, that's two meals right there. Uh, so yeah, I always try to, every time I'm at Publix or Win dixie you know, I try to pick up something that's uh, survival, what I consider survival food. Now that soup's going to expire in a few years. It's not as good as buying the, the Mountain House, which I bought for backpacking, that, that doesn't expire until, t you know, like 20, 27 or whatever it was, something crazy, you know, so that stuff will keep for years and years and years, you know. Um, man, well, so it is getting pretty good. I, well, someday I'll come back. And uh, we'll keep on going that way. But I guess this is getting really long. I'll kill the resilience video right there. I hope it helps somebody. You know, I only get a few people that watch these videos. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a battle. I mean, you got to do it each and every day. Uh, and eat like hell, look at today. I, was, I, I, I always try to do something on the house every day. Now the leaves are coming down. And I've been up there probably four or five times this year already. And, you know, before I put the ladder away, I said, you know what, I'm going to go up there one last time. And good thing I did. The leaves had come down by the thousands again. And then the gutters, you know, they weren't completely full like they were before. But they were, so that took me a couple hours before I came out here hiking, you know. So I got something done on the house. It wasn't a whole lot. Uh, I got them bags taken back. Man, I want to keep going. But it's got, I mean, look how far I got to hike back. I think it's. Let's see, I'll get my finger in here. It's way over there somewhere. Oh my God. I hope I make it back. I just, uh, you know, it's just, just I want to keep going because it looks like it's it's really going to dive back into the forest up here. I wanna, I'm going to wait and come back with my hikers someday. There's another bird. I, I can't be stupid. Let's take it back. Hey guys, that's it for today for the videos. I made three of them. Um, I would take, I, I am going to do, I might do it today, who knows, I, I'm going to make a liberals is stupid video, <laughs> or liberals, liberals are crazy video, because, uh, you know, I got to tell you all the things that comes out of my wife's head sometimes, you know, the water heater being one of them, you know, that, that, that I'm just like scratching my head going, 
where in the world is she getting her news from? You know, and I know it's that it's Google phone. You know, that's all she looks at for news, and they're, they're just spoon feeding her all the propaganda, and she just doesn't watch that. She watched one YouTube video about the financial crisis, and she said, you know, this is all your right wing stupid stuff. I don't want to watch that. You know, so yeah, that'll, that'll be a fun video. All right, bye bye.